Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today we're going to be taking a look, as promised, at upgrading the Clevo D901C with dual video cards. Let's first take a look at what we're dealing with in terms of thermals. Here we can see a 3D Mark Vantage run operating on the current heatsink setup. On the right is the NVIDIA 9800 MGT and on the left two uh, heatsinks are the CPU and platform controller hub. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, take down the internal uh, thermal setup of this machine. We're going to start with the GPU heatsink and fan combo, and then we'll go ahead and move down with the CPU and platform controller hub combo heatsink. I'm going to go ahead and then remove the bracket for the second GPU, and then we'll get that all situated. Moving the primary CPU fan reveals two PC6400 memory modules for up to 8GB of storage, and the much larger fan is both in charge of the CPU and the platform controller hub combo heatsink. Removing the primary CPU heatsink identifies two sections connected by three heat pipes. Removing this heatsink also identifies the platform controller hub heatsink which is left on the top side of the motherboard or the keyboard. Removing the CPU identifies an Intel Xeon E5450, which as shown is socket modded from 771 to 775 with two additional notches cut out as well as two pins bridged. Looking at the system with all of the cooling finally removed, we can see just how much space is dedicated to both the modularity of the system components and the cooling solutions that were devised for this system. that the system is prepared for an upgrade to two video cards and SLI, I need to first flash my first video card. Um, and the reason for this is actually because I have two different video cards, an 8800MGTX and a 9800MGT. Two cards that are functionally identical, but on paper just a little bit different, can actually take the same firmware. Flashing them identifies to the system that they're effectively the same card and will allow uh, the native NVIDIA drivers without any sort of hacks or mods to enable SLI. With the firmware successfully flashed, we can say goodbye 8800 MGTX and hello 9800 MGT. Wondering how this all makes sense, well, it's kind of complicated. The 8800 MGTX over time was later rebranded to the 9800 MGT, although they're functionally the same video card. The only difference is the date on the firmware. Pretty dang interesting. The performance, the shader count, the frequency, everything else is the same. Which, for all intents and purposes, is the only reason that this is possible to begin with. Interestingly, these weren't the only cards that you could do this with. The 9800M GTX and GTX 260 and 280s also suffered the similar fate of being rebrands. As you can see in this scenario, I do not have an SLI bridge because at the time, even though MXM was standardized, the video cards were in many instances not. Um, Asus and Alienware, all using different somewhat designs, meant that uh, SLI cables also were somewhat different from model to model. All components reinstalled, repasted, and flashed were ready to rip in benchmarks once again. Reboot since the upgrade identifies both parent and daughter 9800 MGTs. Pretty exciting stuff. So, now we're going to jump into 3D Mark Vantage as we left off in the last video. 
performance out of the gate is pretty dang impressive. No tweaks or hacks, we ended up with a performance score of 8481. And compared to the HarperBot world record for dual 9800M GTs and SLI, I ended up with a score of 9607 overclocked, beating all previous records. That's a pretty good day's work in my opinion. Thank you all so much for watching, and have a great day.